Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you camera hacks and hidden features on the iPhone 11 camera. These features and hacks are going to help you take better pictures and be more efficient. And so if you're excited to learn what they are, hit the like button and let's get into it. So first we need to set up the camera settings. So when we go to the camera and first we want to look at formats. So I would keep it at high efficiency, but it's up to you if you want to change it to most compatible. Most compatible means it'll be a JPEG file. And next for video, I would put it at 4K at 60 frames per second. It uses more storage, but it takes better videos. The next one is slow motion. I would keep it at 240 frames per second. Now the next thing is you want to make sure that the volume up for burst is turned on because then you can take burst shots with the volume up button. And for then when we click on preserve settings, make sure that the live photo is turned on because you're going to want to take a lot of live photos. And then also the grid feature needs to be turned on. This helps you with composition and view outside the frame as well. You want to turn that on and make sure that the smart HDR is turned on as well. That'll improve the quality of your photos. You can easily take burst shots by holding the shutter down and moving it to the left. And if you move it to the right and hold it down, it records a video. And if you press that white button, it'll actually take photos while you're recording the video. Another way to take burst shots is to press the volume up button. You can also control the exposure directly in the shot. So click on the screen to focus and then move your finger up and down the screen to change the exposure, either decrease it or increase it before you take the shot. The other way is to click that arrow and then the plus and minus sign and then that bar you can actually move uh, to the left or to the right. You can also manually control the exposure when you're doing a time lapse. So you move to the time lapse, you again, you click on that arrow and it opens the bar where you can decrease the exposure or increase it. Now you can also control how blurry the background is on portrait mode. So you click on the arrow and then you click on the F and the F stands for F-stop and then you focus on your subject and then when you click on the F it'll open this bar that if you move to the left or the right it'll control the background but as you can see it told me to move further away which I do and then now as I'm moving the bar it changes the how blurry the background is and you can also create a slow motion selfie so I moved to selfie mode and I went to the slow motion function. And as you can see, I was also adjusting the exposure, which you can do as well. And then you do your little video and this is what it looks like, which could be fun. And uh, you can use it in a vlog. On live mode, you can create really interesting effects. So when you take your photos on live mode, you go to the actual photo, scroll up with your finger, and then on the bottom, you'll see these different effects. So you can turn that photo into a little loop video, a bounce video, which is like the boomerang on Instagram or the long exposure. So the long exposure is basically anything moving in the photo. It creates it as a blur and you can use that effect to take really interesting photos with water because the water would be the only thing in the photo moving or with at night with uh, the cars on the highway, it creates these long moving lines. Before you switch over to one of those effects, you want to duplicate your photo. So first thing you would do is you would click on that shareable arrow and then it would you select your photo that you want to duplicate. You click on the next button and then you scroll to where it says duplicate. You click on that and you duplicate but not as the still because you want to duplicate the live. And then you go back and then you change your photo to whichever effect that you want to keep it at. Now in your camera album, click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and click on aspect ratio grid. So what this does is it shows you the photos and videos, how they were taken, were they horizontal, vertical. So it saves you time so you don't have to go back and click on each one to be able to check. 
You can also use the wide angle lens on selfie mode just by clicking on those two arrows in the corner to expand it or bring it closer. Now you can open the timer feature by clicking on the arrow and the little time icon and then you can choose a three second or a 10 second timer and this is great when you're taking selfies and you want to practice posing and to see what looks good or you want to take a group photo you can also change the aspect ratio by clicking on that arrow and then selecting the four by three symbol and then you can change it to a photo that's 16 by nine four by three or one by one, which is a square photo before you take it. There are four ways to actually take the photo. So the first way is this tripod comes with a Bluetooth remote. So you connect that to your phone and then you can use any of those buttons, the plus or the minus or the middle photo button to actually take the photo. The two other ways to take the photo is just by clicking on the volume up button, either on your phone or on your headphones. And the fourth way is on your Apple iWatch. So you can actually also control the dial to zoom in or zoom out of the photo. And you can see on the um, actual screen of the watch, you can see what your camera sees. So it helps you with posing. And this is what I use sometimes. And the other thing is you can just press the white shutter button and to take the actual photo, or if you press and hold, it'll take a video and it'll stop recording when you let go. And, or you just press and let go and then it'll actually start taking the video without you holding it. And you can also always use the three second timer, which allows and helps you to get your pose right. Let me know in the comments if you learned something new and be sure to share this video with a friend who would enjoy these tips as well. And don't forget to subscribe. I share new videos twice a month on everything to do with travel, iPhone photography, and posing for photos. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.